Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out how we can deploy our application, our Flask application in this case. We have uploaded it to our GitHub. Uh, this is the application, it's very simple. Our app.py is just going to load this uh, HTML, which is right here. It's just a basic h1 and a bunch of text. And we're going to be uploading it to Python Anywhere. So once you create your account, you're going to be met with this uh, interface and we'll and we're going to create a new web app. This is just a basic installation process here. You can, you know, put your URL. I'm not going to be going all of this too much. If you want to explore, go for it, but I'm just going to go to the things that matter. Here, if we're using Flask, which is the case, we're going to pick Flask. It'll be easier. You can just do manual configuration and search up how to make it for Flask, but like it'll just do it for you. For the Python version, uh, as long as it's not two point something, as long as it's three point something, you're good. I'm just gonna go to the most recent version. I would recommend you do the same. And here is where configurations start to happen. Okay, so this route is where the initial default page is gonna be loaded to this URL. This we can live, this we can leave as is, and then we'll change it later to our application. Right. So now your application is done, everything is loaded, and if we go check out our website, it just has the basic um, text that says hello from Flask. All right, so now let's get into the thick of it. We're gonna, let's check out files real quickly. And here, again, we saw that in my site, in this route, which is home, my name, and then my site, and then the application, flask, dot, uh, flask underscore app. Here is the basic uh, hello flask that we that we're getting on this page, right? So we want to change instead of this uh, application, we're gonna want to use our uh, code. So you're gonna so let's open a console. Let's just use a bash console. Perfect. So we're in home right now, and then. You can do the you can do this however you want whatever your needs are but I could but I would recommend cloning your repository right here since it will create the folder for it to be inside so let's copy the um, link then we do git clone and then we paste the link and if we show our our repository will be here and then let's see what's inside And here is our folders and our files. So everything is here. Now let's leave this console open. I'm gonna open a, I'm gonna duplicate it and then go back to Python anywhere. And from web, we're gonna have to change a few things so that instead of pointing to uh, the my site uh, folder, it'll be pointing to our, to our folder, which was in just orb, just directly orb. So instead of my site, I'm going to do orb, which is the name of my repository, whatever yours is, you'll have to change it to that. This just leave it as default. And then we're going to uh, edit the configuration file. This configuration file might be different if you're using another framework or if you've chosen manual edit. If you're choosing manual edit, look up how to configure it for your framework. But in this case, since it's flask, it'll be this. Here again, a few changes. Instead of my site, we're going to use our uh, folder, which is orb. And instead of flask app, you have to change it to whatever you have here. App equals flask dot uh, underscore underscore name underscore underscore. If you have app here, or if you have app dot whatever, you need to change it right here. So instead of flask app, I'm just going to leave it as app. Oops. With these changes, everything should be done. So now we save. And we can reload from here, or we can go back to web. And from web, we can reload the page. And if we reload the page, the our project is now being loaded. One other quick tip: if you want continuous deployment with your GitHub and your Flask uh, and your Flask application on Python anywhere, there's a thing you can do to make it work, but it's a premium feature. So we're going to use a workaround so we don't actually have to pay Python anywhere to get to get continuous deployment on here. For that, we're going to change our code real quickly. I'm back here at Visual Studio Code and I'm going to paste this code, which is at root git underscore update. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to create a webhook with GitHub so that every time there is a push, we commit a push to the repository 
the the webhook will send a message to this root and it'll and it'll pull from origin so how are we going to do that well we come here to settings on our github project and we go to webhooks i already have one for the project that i'm working on but let's create another one for this one all right so we create we add a webhook here we need to put the url where the payload is going to go so it's going to be our web page right here and then it's going to be slash whatever we have here git update whatever you want you can put um whoops sorry you can do whatever you want there we're going to choose format json very important we're not going to do a secret although we could if we wanted extra protection uh, that's up to you, really. And then we need to choose a push event so that we get a, a, an update from the webhook every time we push to the repository. And then we say add a webhook. Now it'll do a test webhook, although it's not going to work because we haven't actually uh, uploaded this code to the GitHub. So let me push this real quickly. Our update's gone through. And now we'll need to do this uh, manually since we don't have the webhook working. So let's just do git pull. Change is saved, and now we reload the page. We'll see nothing's changed, really. But now, if we come here to our HTML, right? And instead of saying, um, let's just, instead of this in Spanish, let's do it in English. And let's commit our changes. The GitHub has already gotten the changes. Let's see how our webhook is doing. Actually, our webhook is doing great. The ones that the one that's failing is the other one. Don't mind it. But the webhook we just set up has worked perfectly now. So, if we reload, now the the code updates itself. The thing is now it's really inconvenient for me to be reloading the web page every time we change the code in our repository. We need to come here and reload the page. That's very inconvenient, and it also defeats the purpose of it being continuous deployment all the time by itself. So we're going to be using this thing called Git hooks, not web hooks, but Git hooks. It basically allows us to execute console commands every time there is a Git action. Now there isn't a Git hook for push or pull, but there is one for post merge. So we're gonna be taking advantage of that. Now we go back to the console and here we're gonna to go to the Git folder. So we do cd.git. And then we do slash hooks. And as we'll see here, we have a bunch of example files for the different options we have. But instead of that, we're just going to create our own. So we're going to do it uh, like this. We're going to do cat. And then we're going to do greater than. And then the name of the file, which is very important. And it has to be the exact same for you as well. Just going to be post merge. And then we hit enter and here um, we can just write down what we want our file to contain so we're going to do our um, our slash bin slash bash but instead of that it has to be bin slash sh and then enter and we're going to do a touch and here we're going to put the path to the configuration file and if you don't know where that is you come back to your web tab and down here, this is the complete um, this is the complete path to our configuration file. So I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to paste it right here, and we're going to hit enter, and that'll, and then we have to do Control C to exit out of the command, and that'll finish the, um, and that'll create that file. If we do ls again, we can see our post merge file right here. Now what are we doing? So what we're doing is that every time we get a post merge. We're going to be uh, doing a touch to the configuration file, which basically touch either creates a file with that name or it updates the um, the time that it was created for. So what it does when it's create uh, when it updates the time, which is basically what pressing this big green button does, is that it reloads our application. Now, the last last thing we need for it to work perfectly is we give it permissions for it to be executed. So, so we do chmod, and then we do plus x for execution, and we do we specify the file. So post merge, enter, and there we go. And that should do it. Let's just test one more time. This time, I don't know. For example, 
getting rid of the rest of the code and we'll add another paragraph which is just going to be hello world from flask we'll commit this we'll push let's see how our repository is doing we got the changes and now without us needing to reload our application the changes have already been done so there you go that's how you make it so that your repository with your flask application is updated automatically on python anyway thank you so much for watching i'll catch you later goodbye